Jupiter Media presents Avasar telecasting global opportunities hello and namaste welcome to Avasar program this program is all about education and educational news and views especially we are time and again talking about different university education system and different destination Nepal is going to be a study hub for international student too in this case today I'm going to talk about Midwest University. It has established in 2010 and uh, um, uh, like trying to give the quality education to national student now, but the vision is acquiring international student too. To give you the brief information about university, university's plan and other things, we have very special guest from university who is none other than Nanda Bahadur Singh, who is a professor doctor. Um, um, uh, he's handling as a VC in Midwest university let's welcome him to the show um, uh, professor dr nanda Bahadur singh you are welcome on our show thank you so much okay so we are quite happy to having you in this platform so that we will be able to clear all the potential about the study in nepal program and how midwest university is delivering quality education in local era so first of all would you please introduce yourself a little bit then after i will uh, ask you something about the university uh, thank you for the invitation as you have just explained, I'm the Vice Chancellor of Midwest University. The university has been set up by the Federal Act in 2010 and is uh, set up because of the national need in the regional context. And the university is uh, general university and has all sort of the faculties open. Now we have converted into the graduate schools. We have all seven graduate schools. And uh, when I was appointed the Vice Chancellor of Midwest University, at that time we had around 7,500 students, now increased to 11 to 12,000 students. And we have around altogether 700, um, uh, you know, uh, professors and um, civil servants, you know, these uh, people, staffs, administrative staffs. And uh, this university is located in the heart of uh, Shuke City. And we have uh, Three locations in Suket. At one, we have a central office. We call it at Queen Nepani. Another is uh, nearby. We have a central uh, administrative, you know, academic buildings uh, where students uh, go to their academic activities. And a little bit uh, away from the central, around seven kilometers away from Suket, we have Sanu Suket. We have recently uh, constructed. Uh, we have completed constructing the um, uh, central uh, graduate school of engineering. And um, now we have around 10 uh, constituent campuses uh, scattered throughout the whole country, especially more in Karnali province, second in Lumini province, and third in Kathmandu, that is in uh, premise number three. Our planning, according to the law, the planning is that the university can, uh, you know, provide uh, the academic access to any part of the country. And, but more we would like to uh, you know, concentrate uh, to the vocational and technical education uh, because uh, Nepal now needs the um, specialized professional groups to produce. Uh, for that, uh, what we have done is that uh, Karnali is a virgin land for research and development. And we have a lot of natural resources. There is a lot of biodiversity. And we have a lot of medicinal plants. We have Erchagumba, mm -hmm. you know. So we have... Um, Dapil Lopoporus, Empyzinus Lopoporus, and we have musket here, you know, Kasturi in Nepal, we call. All those are the natural resources, and we have high mountains, Kanjuroba, and one of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, tallest peaks in Nepal, which is more than 8,000 meters. And we have uh, so, so many rivers, Karnali River, Veri Rivers, you know, these are all rivers coming down from the north to south. So these are the source of civilization in Karnali. Therefore, uh, being university, university has uh, uh, to make the plan to uh, harness the natural resources and prosper the academic activities or the economic uh, growth of the nation. So in that way, we are trying to concentrate on five points. Number one is the academic excellence. There are so many things. Now we do not have time. Let's just tell you the vision. Mm -hmm. Second is the economic growth. Now being the federal government, uh, this uh, university, um, what amount of money government has given, you should not rely on that only. You have to be self-reliant. You have to try to be self-reliant. Okay. You have to generate your own activity through your own academic activity, including the small industrial corridors. You can set up the corridors. Mm -hmm. Second is economic growth. 
So for that, I have already made a plan of 260 crore, you know, this integrated vision. If I complete that vision, we can own 28 crore to 35 crore per year, and we can provide 1,000 jobs to the people in that region. And then third point is, you have to redesign the course of study, not the improve. You should not revisit. Mm -hmm. But you have to redesign the course of study based on the regional, national, and international context. Mm -hmm. Okay? For that, what we have done is that if you give 100 marks to one subject, it should be divided into 70% international weightage, 10% national weightage, and 20% regional weightage of that course. So that tomorrow our student will be marker relevant market demanded product, right? Mm -hmm. So they can have the job in, at the local level, at the national, at the international level. Mm -hmm. So these are our planning. And third point is the redesign of the course of study. Mm -hmm. And in that one, 20 to 25% of the innovative course of study is going to be included. Mm -hmm. Those innovative courses developed internationally in the last one decade. Mm -hmm. And the fourth point is, as you know, a university be universal. We should have international relations. Mm -hmm. So exchange of the professors, as well as students of international level. And our students, our professor can go outside and uh, uh, foreign person and student can come to our university. Then we can have exchanges. So the fourth point is we have to exchange the uh, foreign professors and students. For that, I have already started from speed at top, you know, this uh, international MU. I have done a lot of interest in MU with the next six months to one year. will increase to around 50 to 100. And the last one, but not the least, is very important, is infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. You know, unless and until you have the beautiful, smart infrastructure development, you cannot have a high quality education. Mm -hmm. So you need lab, you know, you need a lot of, you know, the, you know, the, the classroom set up with the multimedia. And then, for your kind of person, within one or two months, Midwest University is going to announce the first digital university in South Asia. Okay, for that, great. you have uh, uh, like for uh, that our uh, you know team mm -hmm. of 20 to 30 IT engineers are working day and night. Mm -hmm. Very soon they will finish it. In that they are going to work on ERPS Enterprise Resource Planning System. Mm -hmm. Second, they will also work on the EMIS Education Management System. And then LMS, learning management system, in that we will include the tonitin, plagiarism testing, mm -hmm. as well as we will have the smart hajir, mm -hmm. and we will have the my second teacher. Okay. And finally, what we are doing going is that, then with this one, we are starting molecular lab and biodiversity lab. This molecular lab is the product. We, will, we are going to produce six to seven new products within the next three to six months. These are the basic plans. Okay. You have a lot of plans, but just this much for Amy at the moment. Okay. Professor Dr. Nandabadur Singh, okay. you have elaborated uh, like uh, 360 approaches of yeah. um, uh, uh, Midwest University. Yes. So you have uh, like uh, three decades of experience on different academia. In this case, how you are trying to deliver global standard education um, uh, in um, uh, Midwestern University. Some of the points you have already elaborated, that proactive approaches. So talking about the curriculum and the delivery system, how you are trying to deliver the global standard education. Number one is you should have, a, I told you, five points. Okay. And um, very important is we should have the very infrastructure development. Now after that, the most important thing is that you, you should have the qualified teaching staff, academic staff, right? Mm -hmm. So now we do not have so much, uh, you know, experience, well travel, internet exposed uh, academic, um, you know, personality. Mm -hmm. That's why to fulfill that vacuum, that gap, mm -hmm. I imagine try to hammer out and try to hire mm -hmm. 25 PhD and postdoc holders mm -hmm. who are teaching at different universities globally who are Nepali, but teaching global, right? So for that, I announced an advertisement mm -hmm. asking them, come back to your country, mm -hmm. shop your country. I'll provide you seven full professors, mm -hmm. eight associate professors, 10 assistant professors. Now, 135 PhD and postdoc holders from 80 countries I applied. With the next one month, we'll hire 25 PhD postdoc researcher. Those researchers are not only those older PhD and postdoc, mm -hmm. but they are the innovators. When they will come inside the university, mm -hmm. will start the mode of innovation, mm -hmm. mode of R&D, research and development. I am the first vice chancellor to pass to set up R&D, research and development center. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. within a university. If you do not have R&D, mm-hmm. university cannot go ahead. If you look into Nepal's 11 universities at the moment, mm-hmm. no university have, have had a single patent right mm-hmm. for the last many, many years. years if yeah. you go to India, mm-hmm. let me take a, a name of one university yeah. I have just visited. Mm-hmm. That is the Chandigarh University. Chandigarh, yes. Chandigarh University has been set up in 2012, mm-hmm. two years later than us. Mm-hmm. Midwest University was set up in 2010, yeah. AD. Mm-hmm. And when I went there, I found they had 35,000 students, mm-hmm. more than 7,000 professors, and similar number of administrative staffs. Mm-hmm. And they have ME with more than 300 uh, universities throughout the whole world. Mm-hmm. And what surprising thing was that last year they applied 1,500 patent rights, mm-hmm. but they got right. 901 patent rights in one year. Imagine it. Mm-hmm. And in Nepal, if you look into the whole history of Nepal, yeah. only 76 patent rights have been taken by Nepal. Mm-hmm. But if you look into the university, nothing, even a single yeah, patent right is not given to any university. Then why our universities are set up? Mm-hmm. What is the role of the university? Yeah. If you look into the role of the COVID-19 mm-hmm. pandemic, you know, Dr. Gilbert, the professor of Jennifer Institute at Oxford, she developed <coughs> vaccine. vaccine. She saved humanity today. Mm-hmm. Similar thing happened in China. General Wayne, she's also a lady. She developed another vaccine. Mm-hmm. If you go into Germany, a couple, mm-hmm. a couple, they develop another vaccine. <coughs> Today, what vaccine we are using? Yeah. They are the product of these people. They are the people of the university. Yeah. And what our professors are doing in Nepal? Yeah, yeah. Can I raise this question to you? And who will answer this? Government should be responsible. Professor should be responsible. University vice chancellor should be responsible. Mm-hmm. Nothing is there. And one interesting thing is that for the last 10 years, you know, last 10 years, not more than eight patent have been taken by Nepal. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Nothing then why do you sit at the university in Nepal? What is the meaning of the university? That's why, even though we are same same, but we have to make difference. Trying to do difference. difference. Yeah. Okay, so especially talking about, we have already like uh, talk about the different popular courses in off the record. So how Midwest University is trying to give varieties of courses um, uh, which is uh, relevant, uh, relevant to the local um, uh, Nepal and relevant to global as well. Yes, uh, for this one very specific answer is, mm-hmm. what I'm thinking is that, why do you set up 25 ministries in Nepal? In the constitution of Nepal, mm-hmm. we have 25 ministries, right? Mm-hmm. In Nepali, we say, Pachis uh, Wada Mantra Lai. Why do you set up? Mm-hmm. Then we have to look those 25 ministries, course of study, do you have or not? Do you have this kind of manpower produced in Nepal? That is my angle, yeah. my imagination. And I look into my course of study. Mm-hmm. And what course of study to cover some of these universities, these uh, ministries, mm-hmm. I will keep on them, okay? If not, then I will put on the new courses mm-hmm. into my co- university, number one. Number two, I will look into the international need. Humanity is the same on this planet. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. Humanity needs the same thing. Mm-hmm. Then 25, 21st century, we need the IT, digital world people. Mm-hmm. I need the innovator. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, we need the excellent social innovator, mm-hmm. management expert, mm-hmm. education expert, humanity, social science expert. Uh, science and technology expert, technology, yeah. engineering expert, medical science expert, agriculture and forest expert. Mm-hmm. I am looking to that. And what I am planning is that I want to redesign new course. That course will be globally acceptable. Yeah. And I told you that 25 PhD and postdoc and will come and they will give the tenure to our local. And we have also professors, qualified professors. Mm-hmm. And these people will increase the quality of education. That is the global education from Midwest University. That's my plan. Okay, so especially talking about the um, uh, present scenario, international students are traveling here and there for the quality education. Nepal, being a Nepali, we have to make Nepal as a um, uh, study hub as well. Targeting all these things, you have very good experience about um, uh, abroad study and um, uh, you have um, achieved that um, uh, knowledge as well. How you are trying to link international market uh, to Nepal uh, through Western University, Midwestern University. Okay, thank you for that very important question. The, what what I am planning is that if you set up a university that is uh, you know federal university, any university has no limitation of knowledge and relation. Mm-hmm. They are limitless. 
borderless because the education has no uh, you know limitation of their border physical borders mm -hmm. nationally we are nepali mm -hmm. but in terms of uh, looking into research and development education we are open to all the world right mm -hmm. so if it is like that what i am planning is that i am when i became the vice chancellor then i look into the industrial relations scenario at my university it's very very pitiable you know mm. but uh, um, uh, only a few universities they have been set up uh, but the question is we didn't we didn't have any documentation mm -hmm. now i'm going to do, document everything uh, so that the institute will have a institutional memory mm -hmm. tomorrow after you go the, you should have the institutional memory of each and everything mm -hmm. so that the newcomers will have a much easier way to deal with that's why what i am planning is that after coming i hate uh, you know uh, am with uh, unesco mm -hmm. for the online you know m m online um, um, delivery and the second uh, what i did is i started having am with three university in china mm -hmm. one university in uh, spain or uh, two universities now we have relation with uh, <coughs> you know this norway one in south korea especially in education we have already developed the in the course of study and study a new uh, department mm -hmm. especially in education is the humanistic approach is a human right best approach mm -hmm. all the students of different uh, you know differently able the student should get the opportunity to work in the same to learn in the same classroom system so we have done this kind of thing another important thing is that and uh, now i am going to hire a very uh, renowned internationally exposed uh, Uh, executive director of the industry relation so that we can speed off the exchange of the student and recently we have a student from south korea we have some student from china and after my arrival and now we will speed up because it is one very um, uh, you know this uh, easy and very stable opportunity for you is that you are sandwiched between india and china we have 1.4 billion population in china we have 1.3 billion population in india why don't you if you try to harness or attract mm -hmm. the people from this two area into nepal this is one point mm -hmm. second point is nepal is a himalayan country mm -hmm. beautiful country mm -hmm. with the biodiversity ethnic diversity mm -hmm. cultural diversity linguistic diversity right mm -hmm. many people can come to nepal to see mountains and enjoy the beauty of the nature mm -hmm. then you have to make academic industry for nepal mm -hmm. like uh, australia is making the academic industry now the you know this um, this is a backward country in africa what you call it is ethiopia mm -hmm. now if they have set up more than 30 universities after 1990 mm -hmm. so why do we not doing this kind of job in nepal mm -hmm. so i request just it i requested the education minister mm -hmm. uh, education science and technology minister uh, honorable uh, devendra paudel is very positive mm -hmm. why can't you speed up opening the qualified medical colleges mm -hmm. okay Nepal will be the hub for medical college, engineering college, technical college, uh, vocational, you know, you know university. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, you know, attract a lot of uh, students from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we can earn money. So you have to convert our education system into academic industry, so that you can create the job, you can create the hope for the people. And for that, Nepal government should act so fast on time. Otherwise, we'll lose this opportunity in the days to come. Of course. talking about the industry uh, relation with uh, midwestern university um, uh, uh, let's say uh, like international universities are tied up with different industry and uh, um, uh, set up their own incubation center and they, they give that sort of the exposure that's why they will be easily deserve in industry and they uh, the alumni are being the brand ambassador of university likewise what sort of the planning you have uh, to work with a midwest um, university uh really if you look into that one nobody was thinking in that way in that line mm -hmm. when i was there then i began to think mm -hmm. about that kind of you know this imagination creativity unless and until you develop a small industrial corridor mm -hmm. you cannot create the job for the student we call the part time jobs mm -hmm. sometimes they can enjoy it you know? learning and earning both way yeah. that's why i immediately started this within the next two years mm -hmm. and now we are going to open one to three star hotel okay we well, operated well, by well, hotel well. management student mm -hmm. and we have a global level standard for the teacher and we are hiring uh, the five star uh, chef uh, who is going to start amu uh, you know this uh, bakery industry okay. 
we have to set up another bakery industry mm -hmm. so that we can supply the bakeries to the people in the market as well as to our own staff. Mm -hmm. We can earn a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are going to do this now, number one. For hospitality sector. Yes, history. Now, because history we learn and earn both. We have 10 beautiful rooms. Mm -hmm. And if our guests come, they will stay in there. Mm -hmm. If not, then we will convert it into the business. You can do it, right? Yeah. This is one way. And the second is that depending upon the nature of the uh, graduate school, of each graduate school, we are going to set up some uh, industrial, you know, this corridor. For example, recently we have set up the agriculture and forestry. Mm -hmm. uh, and for that, we have got 132 big acres of land mm -hmm. from the local people. Mm -hmm. They are so eager to provide it to the university. Okay. And the, what I'm planning is that within the next uh, three to six months, I'm going to set up an organic manure industry. Great. So and then you can, you can the start from small. Yeah. Uh, do not become big, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, this, um, uh, what do you say, this, um, uh, so much big plan, but you can start with the small and beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can grow into big later. So I'm going to do that one. And another what I'm going to do is that we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, um, biodiversity. Mm -hmm. We can use the leaves of certain plants, mm -hmm. convert it into the oil. We can produce oil. Yeah. The oil is very much useful in France and Belgium. Mm -hmm. They use it for massage and body lotion. Mm -hmm. So we have that trees mm -hmm. we are going to do. And we are going to produce some shop, MU shop, mm -hmm. shop okay. and MU cream, cream. MU toothpaste, mm -hmm. MU oil, MU right. sanitizer. Who stops it to making it? Yeah, this is it, the way to change the world. This yeah. is the way to change the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and then within the next uh, few months and one year, I'm going to apply for the patent rights because we have the, I uh, you know, 700 medicine plant. Mm -hmm. That's a gumba, mm -hmm. a lot of biodiversity. Mm -hmm. Then why do you carry, carry out? Why don't you carry out the research on that one? It is a virgin land. So we have allocated 10 crore Nepal rupees for that. Oh. It stands for 11.09 percent for R&D research and development at my university. Huh? But if you look into the national scenario of the budget of our country, mm -hmm. I'm very much sorry to say that Nepal, Nepal government has not allocated any money for R&D. Uh -huh. So I do request from here mm -hmm. that the central federal government should allocate at least 2% of uh, the budget of our country for R&D. Mm -hmm. And our budget for the education sector is only 10%, 10.7%, mm -hmm. which is less than 20% of the internet standard. So how do you develop our country into moder modernity? So that unless until the government gives the first priority to the education and health, mm -hmm. nation cannot, cannot go change. ahead, yeah, cannot change itself. That's okay, why. Professor Dr. Nanda Bahadur Singh, um, we are quite happy that you share uh, such uh, innovative ideas and how to change the world, especially health and education is yes. the key for keep uh, part to correction in Nepal because we have very like lacking points there. So uh, thank you so much for your valuable time and those um, uh, television viewers are watching our show. What is your final message to the prospective Nepali student and parents, those who are trying to get best university in Nepal, what is your message? Very simple message is because of the lack of the quality education and qualified manpower, that is the academic you know, these uh, personalities, academic, uh, you know, these uh, research-oriented uh, professors, and many people do not believe, and many parents do not believe that their students should start at our own home country university, right? Yeah. So now what I want to say is that we have to convert our university into global-level standard so that thousands of our students with billions of dollars that are pouring into international education area mm -hmm. should stop and mm -hmm. government should take this kind of things into consideration on time and we have to stop our students and make them to stay in our own soil mm -hmm. and engage them in developing and prospering our own nation. That's a very simple message for our parents and our students. If they go outside, they will make money, they will get the degree, but they will not be counted as the dignified citizen of any country. If I am here, I will be a poor, but I will be a dignified citizen. I love the, to be the dignified citizen of our nation. So that's the message for our young generation. Thank you so much, um, uh, Professor Dr. Nanda Bahadur Singh. Um, uh, thank you so much for um, uh, this opportunity to share um, uh, the uh, unique selling point of uh, Midwest University. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, actually, uh, time and again, we are talking about education, educational news, views, and uh, your career. So we have uh, such a very uh, like innovative 
University here in Nepal, based on Surkhet, Midwest University. We will continuously delivering such a very informative information regarding education and educational um, uh, my reports. Thank you so much for um, uh, um, uh, your valuable time and thoughts. Thank you so much. Our sir, telecasting global opportunities.